Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joshy Laurie, and in a moment, we are going to switch to an interview I recorded late last week with defensive back wide receiver prospect Keenan Anune. After spending his junior year attending Lewenberg Central High School in Virginia, Anune is back at Friendly High School in Fort Washington, Maryland. We touch on a number of topics with the first team All Virginia 1A cornerback, including his expectations for the upcoming season, how his recruitment has been going, and what it's like to play at All Pro cornerback Joe Hayden's alma mater. We do not specifically talk about Anune's top six due to that announcement coming after this interview was recorded. We hope that you all enjoy this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Josh Uluri of the Ricardo Report, and do we have a treat for you today. Joining me over the phone is Keenan Anune, defensive back from Friendly High School. Keenan, what would you say was your favorite part of your junior season last year? Well, I had a lot of great things to happen over the junior season. Uh, probably one of the best things was the first time I went up and heard of the guy. That was probably one of the most unexpected, great and feeling, greatest feelings ever, and it, it felt good to know that my hard work is paying off because I, I work a lot on my athleticism, my, um, my endurance, my stamina. And so for me to do that, and it, it was just a real head turner. So, you know, I like making the crowd go crazy. And, and, and it shows you hard work pays off. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Now, you're headed into your senior season. It's going to be your last chance to get it done at the high school level. How are you looking to take a leadership role as one of the most experienced players on this friendly team you know we have a young team every young team coming out but as all good leaders you have to learn just as much as you teach and going into the season I'm going to have to be a mentor as as much as I'm going to have to be receptive to learning I know that I'm going to have to you know take control a lot and make sure that you know we stay together and we don't ever divide as a team we stay together we're hard. absolutely now I want to really know what have you been doing over this summer to help motivate you and the teammates, showing these guys that you can not just get it done when it's time to play, but you can get the work done on the back end to be prepared for those moments. So what have you been doing over the summer to address that? I, I prefer to show than I do to talk. You know, I can talk, but my thing is to show. So what I had to do was show my dominance and show what I'm capable of doing. So during our seven-on-sevens and during practice, I just established my dominance and what hard work can do and what, you know, you can see yourself doing in the future. You just dedicate yourself. And while doing that, it allowed my younger teammates and my other teammates to build trust in me to know when it's time to make a big day, who to go to. And, you know, I'm not the only big playmaker, but just to know that you have a leader, you know, who's going to work as hard as well as to play as hard. And so I, I just feel that showing a lot of what I can do, it helps me when I talk to them about physically and mentally making yourself stronger on and off the field. I understand that 1,000%. It's important to take that leadership role, especially when you show your guys by example, not just by saying what to do, but actually following through and doing it. Yes, sir. Now, let's uh, shift over. We're looking at the season. Now, last year was a mixed bag for you guys. He's on the Patriots roster, finishing 5-5. Five and five. What are you going to look for to define a successful season for yourself and the team? Well, I, I watched a lot of film because, as you know, I just transferred in from a new team in Virginia. I previously played with Friendly my 10th grade year. But coming back from my senior season, I watched film, like I said, on last season. And I've seen that a big problem was it was all mental. We had a lot of physical capabilities. But when situations got tough, we mentally told ourselves that we couldn't do it or this is too difficult. So what I'm thinking is that we're going to have to approach this more mental wise because we have the same certain situation. We have a ton of stars coming up. We have um, Parrish Good, our wide receiver in the slot, Darius Bowman, a wide receiver in the slot. We have um, DeMarco, Nathan, a running back. We have a lot of athletes that can make plays. And so I feel that if we can work together and, you know, stay mentally strong and keep everybody uplift and keep everybody pumped that we could have a really successful season. Yeah, and I love how you're talking about focusing on the mental side of the ball because a lot of these youngsters, they always think about the physicality of the game, how quick your 40 time is, uh, who's the best killing it at 7-on-7 seven -seven drills, forgetting that when it comes down to making plays in championship games, it's all about who's prepared more mentally. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, obviously, you've had the schedule come out, so I want to know which game have you been looking forward to have you had circled since you got your schedule? Hands down, it's Gwen Park. 
Gwen Park. Gwen Park. That is a big time rivalry. It's been going on for years now. Through the one time I played with Friendly, I lost to um, Gwen Park my 10th grade year. We got blown out last year. So Gwen Park is definitely the number one team that I'm looking forward to playing. I really, I want to do numbers that game, and I, if, if, I, if I were you, I want to come to that game because it's going to be a show. I'm telling you now. I, I'm trying to make it out there because between the talent you guys have on your team and then also the talent Gwen Park has, uh, I've been looking at their running back Terrell Lindsey's film, one of the best running backs in the county, and that is going to be a game on October 6th, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, and that's going to be hosted at Gwen Park in Brandywine, Maryland. Kickoff is scheduled for 6.30. Let's shift our focus a little bit towards the recruiting cycle. Now, heading into your senior year, this is probably the most important summer that you've come out on the circuit. So I want to really know, what teams have you been in touch with? And uh, let's just get a general sense of how your recruitment's been going overall. My junior year, I was out in Central Virginia, and Central Virginia I had good stats. You know, I'm pretty sure I was up there leading the states um, in interceptions. I had a good season, but the school, it wasn't a lot of recruiting going through that area because it was so remote. As I came back up here, I started to get a lot of bigger Division One looks, you know, from Maryland, Virginia Tech, UVA, all, all types of bigger schools. And then, you know, I had to humble myself because – I originally moved down my junior year to make sure my grades were straight, and that's what I have to focus on now more about my grades. So I'm focusing on my grades. I had to look away from the bigger schools. Not that I couldn't get into them, but I had to focus on making sure I was getting myself done. And in that time, the um, D1AA's and the HBCUs, which I'm really starting to like, started to approach me a lot more, um, such as Howard, Morgan State. Then you had a couple other Division One schools, such as Monmouth, Maine, and New Hampshire, that um that shows a lot of interest in me. And all of those schools have offered me, and they, they've stayed um, consistent with me. They've thrown me offers, you know, early on throughout my process. Morgan State was actually my first offer while I was still attending Central High School down in Virginia. So um, it's been a lot of um, smaller D1 schools or, you know, I still get interest from bigger D1 schools, but it's majority been the smaller D1 AA schools and HBCUs that I've shown a lot of interest in. And that leads me to my next question. And I know a lot of the recruiting cycle is uh, you trying to sell yourself to schools and seeing what's the best fit for you. But here is my opportunity to give you the floor to ask, what are you really looking for in a college program? My interests have shifted from uh, my 10th grade and 11th grade year. I've shifted my attention more toward HBCUs just for the history of it. And um, there's a couple of HBCUs that have offered me that I'm very interested in. I would most definitely still consider going to a BCS school. I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I'm looking more for an environment where I know if I hurt myself, you know, the program won't forget about me. They won't just shove me off and put me in the closet as a number number. I want to go to a staff and to a, to a schooling system where it's caring about the character of a person as well as their athletic capabilities. And on top of that, I want to make sure that when I commit to a school, you know, if the NFL doesn't think I'm NFL ready, that I still have an opportunity to put myself in a successful career goal where I can sustain a nice, suitable life. So it's, it's really about thinking ahead and not so more now. Right now, if I was thinking about now, I would look for big facilities and how nice the field is. I want to know what majors they have. You know, I just, you know, I, I'm not going to say I'm a bookworm, but, you know, I like to make sure that I'm going to have a nice, you know, comfortable time enjoying spending the next possible four years of my life there. Yeah, I, I love the approach you're taking to that, Keenan, because you're not just looking for how the football fit will be, but how the overall fit will be, because college is one of the most important decisions you make in your life. Statistically, if you get married, you're probably going to meet your spouse at college. <laughs> and also, most of us don't end up making it to the league. So the fact that you're already thinking about how to shift inside of that life after football is very encouraging. Yes, sir. So what are you thinking of possibly majoring in at college? I've always had the interest in studying animals. So it's been animal sciences, marine biology. But, you know, I had to come to a more realization that, you know, something that fits within my four year term scholarships. So I was thinking more of sports management and along those lines, honestly. I love where your head's at. And especially because in this new day and age, as long as you have a degree and you've got a plan, you can follow anything you want after you graduate from school. Yes, sir. Now, uh, real quick. 
talking about recruiting on a larger scale in the DMV. What are your thoughts on the movement and how the University of Maryland is really focusing on having the top level talent in the DMV stay home? Uh, Maryland, me and Maryland have um, an interesting um, history. Um, coming in my recruitment, I really thought Maryland would have been my um, first offer. You know, I, I don't have, I don't lose any love for Maryland. That's the home. That's the home. That's a big college for our hometown. You know, I'm a, I'm gonna support Maryland. They're they're having a really good movement right now. There are a lot of people, like a couple of my friends, Raymond Bone. You know, a couple of people I know, Vincent Fly. They decided to stay home and go to Maryland. And you know, it's big for them and their movement. I think you know they should um they could reach out a little bit more to you know smaller schools because you know a lot of kids don't have the money to go to some of the camps and stuff like that, so they won't be able to get their stars. And I think, you know, if they don't chase stars as much, they'll be able to pick up uh, a lot more talent. But as of right now, they're doing a good job from staying in the DMV. And, you know, you got to start from somewhere. I don't expect it, the recruiting to be perfect and for them to get everybody. But, you know, it's good that they are focusing more on the kids in the DMV than going down and across the country and getting kids that have no idea what to do outside of campus or Maryland University. Let's talk about your game back on the field. So who in college or the NFL would you say you have to model your game after the most? You know, I watched Jarvis Landry do an interview, and I kind of agree with him. I take bits and pieces of every receiver because everybody is good at certain things. Um, I probably have to say Julio Jones. He has probably one of the greatest jump balls in, in the NFL currently. The way It's he him and Randy Moss that oh. I've seen in my lifetime going up for jump balls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I just take bits and pieces. Like, I, I love the way he attacks the ball in there, so I take a piece of that. I love the way Odell works his release. He, he doesn't like to be touched off the line. I don't like to be touched off the line. I like the way um, Antonio Brown routes are super crisp. I love the way Jarvis Landry is after he gets the ball, how he can make moves and shift defenders. On defensive wide, hands down, it's Patrick Peterson. He's my type of cornerback. Nice speed, quick feet, good hips, and he's a bump and run corner. You know, he can press you out on the line, and he can run with you throughout your route, and that's I take bits and pieces of um, professionals who have perfected the craft and try to mimic, which just leaves my opponents dazed and confused. Can't blame you with that approach. It makes perfect sense. And best way to model your game is to pick and choose from some of the guys at the top of your profession and seeing how they do it and fitting it to what works for you instead of trying to copy somebody's style. Yes, sir. Final question. Now, we all know about the alumni coming from Friendly High School, notably Joe Hayden. <laughs> what is it like to represent that school on the front of your jersey, knowing some of the people who have played for the program before you? Man, it's, it's huge. It's huge because, you know, before I even came to Friendly High School, I knew who Joe Hayden was. He was he was he was the man. He came from Friendly High School, had about twenty offers, went to Florida, then went to the Cleveland Browns, and that was big. So being able to come back and play at the school he did was big for me, you know. But like all great athletes, you should never you know just sit in admiration. You should always be hungry and try to do better. I love you know Joe Hayden. Unfortunately, every time I've come to the school, I just miss him. He didn't come my tenth grade year. He came my junior year when I had moved. So I'm back my senior year. Hopefully, you know, he comes back to the school sooner or later so I can get to, you know, talk to him and converse with him. You know, I even on Twitter, I tried to get him to unretire his number. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the number one looks sweet and he, he did he did wonders with it. But I didn't expect for him to unretire it because, you know, th that's something he earned. And, I you know, I respect it fully. But it, it's fun. It's fun living under the legacy of Joe Hayden. But, you know. Like I said, all great athletes should want to surpass it, and that's my goal. I want to be the greatest. I want my name written on the boot with Joe, right next to Joe Hayden's because, you know, that would mean a lot to me. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm chasing. Hey, I understand that 1,000%. <clears throat> I'd like to thank you, Keenan and Nune, for coming on the Ricardo Report with us. Yes, sir. Uh, fans, be sure to check out Friendly Football this season. They open up their season September 1st at Westlake High School in Waldorf, Maryland. Yes, sir. Come to that. Keenan, good luck this season. Thank you, sir. Thank you.